Hi everyone, this is Theo from ParkerBlocks.com. Today I'm going to review this drawing tablet. This is the Artisu Pencil. Artisu is a company from Taiwan and they have kindly sent me two tablets to try. This is the small tablet and this is the medium tablet. This one measures 9 by 6 inches and the small one measures 6 by 4 inches. So the larger one has almost two times the working surface area compared to the small tablet. I actually received these two tablets a few months ago. I have been putting off the review until now because I have been facing a few problems with the drivers and they have not been solved yet. So I'm going to talk about them later as well as show them to you. But let's do a quick unboxing first. So this is the packaging. Let's open this up. So this is transparent. You can see through to what's inside. And they have some comic drawings here that talks about their product. So let me just take this out. Oh, it comes in different colors. So there is metallic gray, turquoise blue, and rose pink. So this is the turquoise blue that I have. So we have the stylus. This stylus does not require any battery to work. We have a few replaceable nibs and the nib remover. This is the USB cable that uses a micro USB port. And this is the tablet in itself and some forms, the warranty form and the Artisu pencil manual. The design of this tablet and the build quality is quite unlike other brands that I have used when I first took the tablet out. I noticed the back is made of some sort of foam-like material and the front is actually a very thick piece of plastic that's pasted on top of the foam. So with this foam at the back, it doesn't really slide at all. So the friction is very, very good. However, the foam does feel a bit flimsy and this is really lightweight. When I first took it out, I actually tried to bend it and then I saw this. So it says here, do not bend or fold the sketch pad to avoid interference. Do not use on metal surface or place metal objects on top when in use. And the reason why I feel like bending this is because I want to test how solid it is, but it is not that hard. So these are actually um, firm surface but not a hard surface. Let me show you the corner. You can certainly bend this if you want to. Of course the electronics are below that's why you shouldn't bend it. If not you will damage this. There are four physical shortcut buttons here. The USB cable connects through this port here right at the top. For the larger tablet this component is by the side and if you are a left-handed user you can turn this around and use it like this. Now the placement of the component here and the cable it doesn't work well for me because I have a very small table so my monitor stand is right up here and when the cable comes out like this it actually interferes with the monitor stand. So I think this positioning is better however I find that when I'm using this, I have a tendency to, for some, for some reason, I keep hitting the, this button here when my hand is here because I usually place my keyboard here to use the keyboard shortcuts and sometimes I would accidentally just press this uh, shortcut button here. So it happens quite frequently. This is the stylus. It's designed like a hexagonal pencil. This is in yellow and this one is in dark gray. There is an eraser behind, two physical shortcut buttons by the side and this is the nib. This is the nib remover and five replacement nibs are provided. This is very lightweight and nice to hold. As mentioned earlier, this does not require battery to work. When the USB cable is connected, there is this pulsing light here. And when the stylus is near or touching the surface, this will light up. 
Let me talk about the driver first and some of the settings that you can change. This is where you can get some links to the Artisu website, their forum. If you want to update your driver, you can do so here. Once you connect the tablet, it will automatically show the name of the tablet. And this is where you can change the shortcut keys. So you can customize your own shortcuts. They have predefined shortcuts for some applications like Photoshop, Illustrator, Clip Studio Paint, Corel Painter. And if you want to customize your own keyboard shortcut, you can do so here. You can customize the two shortcut buttons on the pen. You can change the pressure setting. Now, after you change the pressure setting, you have to go onto the next page in order to test it. So this is not on the same page. And if you are a left-handed user, you can basically click here to change to left-handed use. And this is the working area. By default, this tablet will map 100% onto the desktop. And if you want to save your settings, you can do so here. I have tested the tablet on both Windows and Mac and the performance is a mixed bag for me. Right now, I am at home and I only have Mac at home, so I'm not able to demonstrate the issues that I have on Windows, but I'm still going to talk about it. There are three main issues. The first is when I'm using Photoshop CS5, an old version of the Photoshop, when I try to draw the strokes, I am not able to get really smooth strokes. There will be some um, inconsistency. The pressure will change ever so lightly, so these strokes, they are not consistent in the thickness, even though I want them to be. And this is Photoshop CS5. And this is Photoshop CC on Windows. Now, it seems that Photoshop CC works better. The lines are smoother. I do not get the inconsistency in the pressure and here as well they are much smoother let me show you photoshop cs5 again so you can see how this line changes here and here these two screenshots are available on my text review so if you want to see them in greater detail you can visit the link in the video description below so this issue with the pressure inconsistency could be because of the driver or it could be because of the app. When I tested this with Adobe Illustrator, with Mischief, Midibank Paint, Kritar, all those software, they work very well. So it could be just a problem with my old Photoshop CS5 that I'm using in the office. It has no problem with CC. The other issue that I want to talk about is after using the tablet on Windows for an extended period of time, I'm not sure of the exact amount of time I use it, it would suddenly stop working. The cursor would stop moving. It's like the tablet doesn't exist anymore. It doesn't work anymore. And when I disconnect the cable and connect it back, it doesn't solve the problem. So I have to restart Windows in order to get the tablet working again. So that is quite troublesome. It happened to me a few times, so it's really irritating. Now the third thing is, for some reason, when I use the tablet to drag a bunch of files, basically just to copy and drag to another place, the screen, the window will just freeze. The last problem that I have is, sometimes when I am dragging some files to another location, the window will just freeze. Let me demonstrate that using a Mac. So this only happens on Windows, but since I don't have Windows, I will just show you what it would happen. So basically I would just drag a bunch of files like this, and I would drag it to another area. The cursor would lock here, it would freeze and it would stop working, and I'm not able to move the files to the other location. So this is what's going to happen in Windows. So that's quite uh, irritating as well. And now I want to talk about the tablet when used with Mac OS. I will be testing Affinity Photo, Kritar, Midibank Paint Pro, Mischief, 
Sketches Pro, Photoshop, Illustrator. Let's start with Photoshop. This is Photoshop CS5. I do not have Photoshop CC on my Mac at home. And let me show you the curves that I can create and the pressure sensitivity you can get with the tablet. So again, I see some inconsistency in the pressure here. The curve is not 100% smooth. There is slight inconsistency. When it comes to latency or lag, well, this tablet is very responsive. It has no lag at all. And this is Illustrator CS5. I am not able to choose the pressure setting for the diameter, so I am not able to get pressure sensitivity with any brushes in Illustrator CS5. I'm not sure about CC though. This is Minibank Paint Pro. The curves are quite smooth. Pressure sensitivity works quite well. Definitely better compared to Photoshop. This is Affinity Photo. Pressure sensitivity does work, but again, there is this inconsistency with the pressure. So I'm not able to get very smooth strokes here. This is Mischief on the Mac. Again, there is this inconsistency in the pressure. The lines are not exactly smooth. It wobbles or it jitters very, very slightly. And lastly, this is Taiyasui Sketches Pro. I am not able to increase the brush size, so that's why the stroke looks a bit blur. But the stroke here is very smooth. There is no problem with pressure sensitivity. And I think it works really well here. This is Krita. It's very responsive, although when I try drawing diagonal lines, it seems that the line is wobbling slightly. Let me use a ruler and see if it's the case of my shaking hands or if it's just the problem with the software. So there is definitely a problem with the software or with the driver because right now I'm using a ruler and this line is wobbly. That is the first time I noticed wobbly diagonal line, so I'm switching back to Photoshop. I'm using a ruler again to draw a diagonal line and see if this can be reproduced using Photoshop. So the line, it does wobble even in Photoshop. I'm now doing the ruler test with other apps and it seems that the issue affects all the other applications that I use so this is not good. I'm not sure why there is this issue with the pressure consistency. Perhaps it's due to the way this tablet is designed. As I press down on the tablet, can you see the the surface moving slightly so this could have affected the actual pressure on the surface I'm not too sure I cannot confirm so that's all for my review today this is definitely not a very comprehensive review because I do not have all the software I need to test I do not have Adobe CC for my Mac at home for example now I think this tablet works well enough for Adobe CC on the Windows but on Windows it has other issues like after a period of time it would just freeze and stop working so you have to reboot which is very irritating and I'm not able to drag and drop files out of a window so that's also quite troublesome. On the Mac there is a lot of issues with the pressure inconsistency again I'm not sure whether or not that is because of the software or because of the app that I'm using so I only have the older version of Photoshop CS5 I'm not able to test with CC so I cannot tell whether or not it is suitable for that but with all the other software that I've tested like Krita, 
while it has some issues with Illustrator, the pressure doesn't work with Affinity Photo and Photoshop, the curves, the lines, they are not as smooth as I want them to be. So again, there is a lot of issues with the Mac as well as on the Windows. So I'm not sure if this is a good product. If you want to get a tablet for mainly clicking things, for example, if you are doing photo editing, where it involves a lot of clicking then yeah sure but if you want to get this tablet for drawing where you have to actually draw a line a long line instead of just clicking and tapping then i think this might not be a good product for that purpose so that's all for my review today if you have any questions let me know in the comment section if i have any updates to the review i will post them in my text review the link is in the video description below and if you are using the same tablet that i have here well i would love to hear your thoughts about it as well because of all the issues that i have maybe you have them or maybe you do not have them but i would love to hear from you thanks for watching see you in the next video Bye.